This is it. Five, three, one. Here we go. So we're around the time when I first got my Switch, I saw there's this demo for this game called Valkyria Chronicles 4. And what I saw from it, it looked like, you know, a first person, you know, Advance Wars where you could just control the units and like, you know, move them around and stuff in like an open world. And it was super cool. And when I got the game finally, like this year, I was like amazed, dude. It is so fun. And it's kind of like Fire Emblem because they do have a permadeath. And there is, you know, you could equip each unit with your own weapon, like, you know, weapons you get and upgrades and all sorts of armor and stuff. And, sorry, it is really fun. And there is so many missions and so much content in this game. It is pretty cool. It'll keep you entertained for, like, hours. And I'm the story, dude, it is so good. And, like, I thought the story was, like, okay coming into it. And I thought, like, the story was about to end, like, and then it kept going, and it kept going. And, like, I was like, wait, this isn't just a short game. This is actually, like, a good, long game. And, like, it was. And it was, like, f like, ah, shoot, I don't know if it's, like, 20 hours long or 40 hours long. But, dude, it was worth it. The story. Holy crap. It is so powerful, so tasty, munchy. And the characters are pretty cool. They're a... Everything's voice acted, even like the they say stuff in battle and stuff, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, so each character, you know, <clears throat> has relationships with like other characters and stuff, and so that can that can affect battle. And each character also has their own unique skills that can trigger during battle, and those skills, you know, they're unique to each character and. There are so many characters in this game. There's like 50 or 60 or something. And it is so cool. So fun. So in depth. And I highly recommend it to anyone. Don't know why. Alright. So. FCR GX. I did not expect to be ranking. All the way up in 4th place. Um, but this game. It is, it is just too good. Like, it is probably the best racing game of all time. As you can see from this gameplay, it is insanely fast and it is insanely hard. Or I should say it's probably the hardest racing game of all time also. But um, just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's only for hardcore gamers only. Like, I could, I'm not, I don't really consider myself a hardcore gamer, but like, I could play this game and I could do pretty well. I unlocked like Diamond Cup or something, which took a while, but still got it. The story mode is really hard though, and it's pretty impossible, at least for me at this point. But there is like, there's so many characters in this game. There's like, you know, like racers and stuff. There's like 30 or 40 or something, and it's crazy. Each of them has their own, uh, which is just a small touch, but makes it all much better. There's like, each character has like a three minute song, like a legitimate song attached to them. And you can only see it while viewing their profile. It's so cool. The stages, um, the themes are kind of different. They're all kind of like the same, like, you know, high tech future racing, all that. But they do, you know, do some pretty cool gimmicks, like, you know, going around in loops and stuff. And it's pretty fun. Um, again, it is very hard and the soundtrack again for all the stages and stuff it is really good and it is <laughs> four player multiplayer if you could actually have friends that want to play this with you because it looks really hard but it actually is very fun and very rewarding to get down so yeah this is probably i mean the reason i really put it up this high is because this is no joke like the best racing game ever and that's got some merit to it, dog. And I don't think any other race of game really stands up to this in terms of quality, quantity, and just overall fun. All right, that's F Zero or F Zero GX. So 
So yeah, Okami. So this is this game is an interesting case. I was not expecting to put this game so high up on the list. And it is just So when I played this game initially, it really reminded me of, you know, Ocarina of Time and kind of like old school, you know, Zelda like adventure games like that. And you know, I played through it and i like when i got to the part that was like the ending pretty much i was like wow that was fun but it was only like it was pretty short it was only like nine hours or so and it was a good game you know it was pretty cool and then it kept going and there is more after that and it kept going and kept going and kept going and the game ended at like 40 hours i'm like whoa dude so yeah so this is pretty much you know it is a i would guess a zelda s calling it a zelda clone is very stupid don't call it a zelda clone this is a, not a clone this is its own thing and pretty much your uh reincarnation of amaterasu and you're pretty much just going f through nippon and essentially getting rid of evil and like bringing nature and stuff to places and like it is pretty cool. Uh, the main gimmick of the game is that you could like draw on the screen with uh, your brush and you could like make stuff appear and like draw pads and do these special attacks and stuff. And it is pretty cool and it is very fun and it's not really a gimmick. It's more of, you know, a full fledged gameplay aspect of it. Uh, the battle is pretty fun. It's like a, you know, kind of hack and slash. You were just mash. I guess like DMC kind of where you just you know mash the button and you could do all sorts of like combos with the with the brush and do certain techniques and it is pretty cool. Um, there is a you kind of get experience in the form of like honor that you get through like doing tasks and stuff and it is pretty cool and the art style in this game oh my gosh it lo it looks beautiful dude and wow it is it is amazing the soundtrack is good. There's not really anything that sticks out to me in the soundtrack. It all kind of like blends in, but it is it is good. It is it is a good soundtrack. And the main reason, you know, I'm putting it so high is that it just feels like a huge grand adventure. And it goes on for so long, like it feels like a whole series of games to be honest. Or like it's like if you kind of maybe had Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and maybe another game and smash it all into one. It is you do kind of want to chunk it off and not, you know, grind it all at once because it is a lot. Like, it's a lot of content. It's like 40 hours or so. And there is like a a ton of collectibles that I haven't even come close to finishing and there's post-game stuff. There's a New Game Plus and you even get ranked on how well you played so you could go for like an S rank and like, you know, taking damage and deaths and all that. And it is crazy. It is not too hard of a game. Um, I would say that, but it is really fun. There's tons of like side missions and tons of collectibles. Like you have like these beads, you have all these treasures, you could fish, you could uh, find these animals, you could try and like restore all like the polluted places and bring them back. There's like a... There's a decent amount of side quests, a decent amount of mini games. This game just had pretty much has it all, to be honest. And because of that, I think it, you know, needs to get this high of a position because it was like it is a great game. Uh, the story is pretty good. There are some like twists and stuff, which are pretty cool. It's nothing like, whoa, like Metal Gear Solid, like I pooped my pants. Wow, that's crazy. But it is pretty cool. The gameplay, you know, it's pretty fun with the battles. And I'm pretty much going over what I already said. Uh, I don't know. The character design and everything is pretty cool. The bosses are fun. And yeah, it is a very long but very fun action adventure game. And it is just a pleasure to play. And I highly recommend it to anyone who could get it. Also... Um, for some reason, the the credit song reset is only like in the PlayStation 2 version. For some reason, maybe it's like some licensing issue. But like it's it is like the really is the best way to fitting like the best fitting way to end the game, in my opinion, is with like the actual credit song in the 
other releases like on the Wii and I think even like the remakes on the Switch and X or PlayStation, they just have like a generic like you know different rendition of a song in the game and I'm like what dude you really need reset so yeah if you're playing it I would recommend the PlayStation 2 version otherwise I would go any version you can so yeah and this is just an awesome game it is very classic probably good as or better than Ocarina of Time in my opinion so yeah that is Okami Blind. Deepest night, reaching out, grasping for a fleeting memory. So, Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes, and Phantom Pain. So, I chunked these two games together because Ground Zeroes is like only an hour long and it's pretty much just a prologue and it was like a test demo, you know, released earlier, yada yada yada. So, they're essentially the same game, except the Phantom Pain is like the actual game. So this game has a ton of content to it and like a lot, like a chunk of meat on its bones. So it has, this game takes place in an open world, which I think is really cool. And it is an interesting direction and keeps things fresh. And, <clears throat> you know, for the Metal Gear Solid series. And it does feel like a Metal Gear Solid game and is pretty fun. You know going around sneaking and you know taking over like small bases and just sneaking through and you have a ton of like weapons and gadgets and you know buddies they could even recruit and on your missions and it's so much fun uh this is mission based and some people see it as a drag i mean it kind of is some of the missions aren't too important but they all build onto this pretty cool story that does link um some previous events like in links mgs3 and peace walker to mgs or metal gear and metal gear solid 2 solid snake and mgs1 and all that so it is pretty cool in that sense because it is it does have a backstory for a lot of characters and stuff and how this really sets up the world of metal gear solid which is pretty cool and it does retcon some stuff which i don't i'm not really going to talk about right now but yeah, speaking of, back to the mission-based things, there's like 50 missions in this game, which is awesome. Uh, a lot of them are just repeats of previous missions, but made harder, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So there is a lot of story to it, which is pretty cool. Uh, there aren't as many cutscenes in this game, but boy, dude, some of the stuff that happened in this game, it is, mm, it is like, you feel so bad for Venom, Snake Man, dude. It is, it is, it is rough. And pretty much throughout the game, though, with some of the gameplay, you go and recruit like wandering so soldiers and stuff, and you add in the, mo the mother base and get resources and stuff, and pretty much plunder bases and make, uh, you know, uh, mother base as best as you can and develop new weapons and all this stuff. And it is, this game is, has so much replayability and. It is not like, you know, how in previous Metal Gear Solid games where it's a continuous story and you have to go along the story. This is pretty much just you doing you, going around the world, doing missions. And the thing about this game it is it is in itself like its own story about, you know, Venom trying to seek revenge for the events of Ground Zeroes. And it is really cool really fun um there's so much you could do in this game there's so much content you could there's all sorts of online stuff that i haven't even gotten into um that i'm not probably gonna go into but it is it is such a great game and it it does it is you know it fits along with the rest of the metal gear solid games like i could say it's even better than you know maybe one or two even dude it is that good even though some people may say, you know, it's weird and stupid. It is not weird and stupid. This feels like a Metal Gear Solid game. Uh, I have not played MGS4, so I can't really give any commentary on that. But this does give a lot of fan service. Or not a lot, but like a decent amount to MGS1 and MGS3. Um, not a lot of MGS2, though, because 
that takes like too far that takes place too far in the future and uh, you know yada 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 so yeah this game is just awesome there's just so much to it and you get so much bang for your buck i got this game for like five dollars on the xbox 360 it's amazing this game is awesome wonderful highly recommend it and get it any way you can so yeah metal gear solid 5 ground zeros and the phantom pain and now we'll be going to number one <laughs> oh gosh, so <laughs> Persona 3 is probably, or Persona 3 Fez I should say, uh, is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Whoa, crazy, right? Um, I'd probably give it, you know, either 9.5 or a 10 out of 10. It is that freaking good. So if you don't know what Persona is, Persona is pretty much like, oh, a life simulator kind of thing. And you just, well, it's an RPG or it's a JRPG, first of all, but like um, some people like to call it a life simulator, but it, pretty much you just, you know, do like daily life stuff. And then you go into the dungeon during night and stuff and defeat enemies. And it's all pretty, it's like really fun and even though it's quite repetitive, it is, you know, fun to go through Tartarus and the dungeon and just check it out, do some stuff. But like, oh man, dude, this story, holy crap, it is, it is awesome. It's one of the best, I can't, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say one of the best stories ever, but like, it, it is really good. And the relationship, the relationship, sorry, in this game Oh man, like, these, they kind of feel, you know, even though it is kind of weird, they do feel like genuine relationships, like you do start to know these people. I mean, probably not, the characters like the main gang aren't as good as Persona 4, but they are pretty good. The story, I would say, is better than Persona 4's, is, um, with like the dark hour and the shadows and you know, with uh, those other dudes, I forgot what they're called, but the Jesus looking dude. It's all really good, dude. The twists and stuff, and bro, like the ending. Holy crap. And it is uh, it is easier than Persona 4, which I kind of like because I played 4 and 3. Whoa. And uh, it is cool. Uh, it does take freaking forever to beat, though. It took like 80 hours for me to beat, so this is not, you know. Let's just rush in and beat it, but like, holy crap, this game is amazing. So yeah, that's the be best game. Oh yeah, the ending is blah! And you will probably cry or something. Maybe not, if you're like a mega ultra Chad or something. Alright, well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching this series. Um, I'll probably make another video after that, just rab rambling over... Uh, other games I beat this year or up to date that I just haven't put in the list because I made the list and I beat some games. So yeah, there we go. Bye bye.